Hi, Darren Levine here, MediaHill.com, bringing you another quick tip. This one involves crop factor, lenses, depth of field, and how they work. This isn't an in-depth look, instead we're going to focus on a few misconceptions about how these things work. Firstly, here we have a 50mm focal length lens, projecting a 35mm sized image circle. We call this a 35mm lens, or a full frame lens, because of the size of the image circle that it can project. And to demonstrate, we have swatches of sensor sizes so you can see just what is going on inside your camera. Up overhead, we have a good old utility light providing the light source, as well as the image. And we can see that the outer ring of the lamp is about where the image circle ends. The distance from the rear element to the sensor is called the flange distance. We haven't made it too precise here, nor are the swatches 100% precise, but they're close enough for this demonstration. Now, the first thing to understand is that lenses are built to project a certain size image circle. This is a 35mm lens, and then we have crop sensor lenses, which are referred to as digital only, digi, or whatever hard marketing terms they chose. And basically they are built to project a smaller image circle, because the cameras they are intended for have the smaller sized crop sensors. Likewise, a camera with a 4 3rd size sensor has a 4 3rd lens for it, and 16mm and 2 3rd inch sensor size cameras have lenses with 16mm size image circles. The catch is that you can usually put a larger format lens on a smaller format camera, but it won't see as much of the image circle, which is what we call the crop factor. You cannot go the other way, because then you will get a peephole effect, as we can see here if we throw an IMAX size sensor behind this 35mm lens. And now for our first debunk, because every time I hear someone talking about DSLR video, they say, I want the 5D because it has the amazing shallow depth of field, and it's because of its huge sensor. Now, granted, I'm sure that not everyone out there thinks that sensors create depth of field, but let's clarify for those who may not know. Consider this demonstration. This lens here can mount on a 5D or a 7D with a crop factor. So let's simulate that and see if the depth of field changes. Here it is on the 5D, and it's got its depth of field. Now let's put it on the 7D. Okay, so where did the depth of field change? Here's a clue. It didn't. The sensor has nothing to do with depth of field. It is physically impossible for the sensor to create or manipulate depth of field. It simply captures the light being projected onto it. Case in point, depth of field is created in the lens, period. Now, in practice, you can end up with a shallower depth of field with a larger sensor because the sensor is seeing more, aka a larger field of view than a smaller sensor. So, to get the same field of view as a smaller sensor camera, you will need a longer focal length and that in turn leads to a shallower depth of field. One last thing on depth of field. Many of you at one point were shooting something and said to yourself, hey, I want a shallower depth of field. Let me pull back the camera and zoom in because of course a longer focal length is gonna give me a shallower depth of field, right? Well, for what you just did, actually it won't. Now, calm down and stop yelling at me and I'll give you the skinny on what's actually going on in this situation. Let's start with a photo at 50 millimeters. We got its composition, great. Now, let's do your trick and pull the camera back and let's use a focal length of 100 millimeters and position the camera so it maintains the same field of view of the in-focus subject. Okay, now I hear some of you saying that I proved myself wrong. Well, let's examine that, shall we? Let's zoom in on the backgrounds, the out-of-focus portions, because if the depth of field changed, the background bokeh certainly should be different. Now look at that, identical background bokeh. All sarcasm aside, the reason the depth of field stays the same is because you didn't just use a longer focal length, you also changed the focus distance. There is an inverse relationship between the focal length and the distance of the focal plane to the camera. What you are actually doing by pulling back is simply magnifying the background bokeh. And anytime you magnify an object, you see more detail. And in this case, you're seeing more blurry detail. To your credit, it is achieving what you were out to get, a blurrier background. But when going about it or showing someone how to do it, be sure not to pass along misinformation by saying you're creating a shallower depth of field. Now to wrap things up here, I just have one more cucumber to pickle. Ever since the 5D2 came out guns a blazing, I've heard an enormous amount of consumer complaining that they want more features, more cameras. I want a full frame sensor and a video body. I want a 5D3 with XLR and no artifacting, blah blah blah. Now, granted, there's plenty of you out there that have a lot more sensibility, but to the few of you out there who are really doing the serious complaining, please, shut up already. Aside from the obvious fact that you're asking companies to give you a quarter million dollar camera for three grand, let's take a look at what your competition is, shall we? 
you want this, a full frame sensor, or even a crop sensor, whatever. Here's a trivia question. How many Hollywood movies out there are shot on full frame Vista Vision? That's right, nearly none. How many are shot on cropped, Super 35 size digital acquisition? A good chunk of the market. Now, what other size digital sensor also has a good sized chunk of the Hollywood market? This guy, the good old 16 millimeter sized two third inch sensor which, by the way, was the first sensor to be used on a Hollywood production, which was Star Wars Episode Two, which was shot on the F-900. So, riddle me this, filmmaker. You're saying that you want this size, when your ultimate competitor is doing just fine with this. I call BS. Case in point here is that any of these size sensors here will give you a great image. Heck, I love my EX-1 at a half-inch size, and my 5D at full-frame sized. I've been saying this for years now. We have surpassed the minimum necessary quality in affordable cameras to play in the same field as the big boys. Yet, I still see forums full of filmmakers waiting for the next big thing instead of using current technology to go shoot their project. No camera will improve your muddy audio, forced dialogue, non-existent plot structure, or a lack of lighting design. My plea to you is set your camera aside. It's pretty, put it up on its pedestal, but leave it there until you've spent twice as much time on your script and pre-production as you have looking into new cameras. No movie has ever made millions just because of a camera it was shot on. Now you've got more important things to focus on. Go to it. So that's it for this little lens, crop factor, depth of field, quick tip slash rant. And this is Darren Levine from MediaHale.com. Happy shooting, everyone.